I'm going to share three stories. They're really good examples of the signs and symptoms of seizures and when to call 911. The first seizure that I experienced was at the weight room. I'm welcoming an elderly couple that joined the gym and I explain that I'm going to do an orientation with them. I tell them that it's going to take about 45 minutes to go through all the equipment. The lady mentions that her husband is going to have a few seizures while we go through the process. What? Three seizures? A few seizures in 45 minutes? She tells me not to worry about it because it's a known medical condition. And her husband simply stares off in the distance, appearance of daydreaming. She's just going to gently hold his elbow. It's only going to last a minute or two and he'll snap out of it. And that's exactly what happened. We're walking, we're talking, and the next thing I know, he stops. He stares off in the distance with a blank look in his face, and he daydreams for about a minute or two. She's just holding his elbow, he snaps out of it, he says he's okay, and we carry on. About ten minutes later, he does the same thing. He just stops, he stares off in the distance, daydreaming, she's holding his elbow. He snaps out of it, in a minute or two, and we carry on. It's exactly as she described. He had three seizures in 45 minutes. Now, we never called 911 because this was a known medical condition and he never got hurt. So, you don't call 911 in that situation. The second time that I witnessed a seizure, I'm at the gym again. A young guy in his 20s comes up to me and he says, Hi, you're the manager? My name's Tom. I have seizures. So, I shake his hand and, Hey, Tom, nice to meet you. I'm really glad that you mentioned that you have seizures. I really do appreciate it. I said, what kind of seizures do you have? And he says, boy, I have these big seizures. I fall back, my eyes roll back in my head, and my arms and legs twitch uncontrollably. He's had this for most of his life. He said he can't work, he can't drive. He's got nothing else to do with his days but come to the gym. So I said, well, wow, it'll be great to see you here every day. Can I convince you to use the machines instead of the free weights. And he says, no. He says, you know what, this condition has held me back so much in life. And it's the one thing that I have and the one thing that I really enjoy is my weights. So I'd really prefer not to. I said, well, do you sense a seizure coming on? Because sometimes, 30 seconds before it happens, they won't know why, but they'll sit down. They want to be safe. They get close to the ground so they don't fall when they get hurt. So sometimes they will have that sense of urgency to be safe. He says sometimes he has this. I said, okay, do you sometimes hallucinate? Because that's another clue that a seizure is about to happen. A lot of people will smell burnt toast. I had a guy in my class put up his hand and say he always smelled his grandmother's house before he had a seizure. So this Tom, this gentleman again, says usually, but not always. So, I am crossing my fingers thinking, wow, the day he has a seizure at the gym, I really hope that he has one of these premonitions or hallucinations. Not the case. I heard the weight slam down and his arms and legs are twitching uncontrollably. He's on the ground, his eyes are rolled back, he's foaming at the mouth. If you've never seen one of these seizures, it is actually scary the first time out. But what do you do? Well, I cleared the area. I moved the bench back, I moved the barbell back. I cleared the area so he didn't thrash into things and break bones and have cuts and, and other injuries as a result. I looked at him and his head went bang, bang, bang. And I went, oh my God, he's gonna crack his head open. So I flew in my stomach and I put my hands under his head. I patted his head. I looked at another member and I said, quick, go get me some towels in the change room. And we replaced my hands with towels. So softly pat their heads, again, so they don't have another injury. Don't hold their head. That's the worst thing you can do. If you try to restrain them and hold them down, they fight against you and they strain their muscles. So don't hold their head. Just let it happen. Okay, so we're watching him and a whole crowd of people came up. Um, I cleared them away. I said, let's give this man some privacy. This is a known medical condition. It'll be really embarrassing if he wakes up and there's 20 of us looking over him. So I cleared everybody away and we just let it happen. By the way, don't put anything in their mouth. A lot of people think that you swallow your tongue and it is physically impossible to swallow your tongue. Um, the worst that can happen is you bite your tongue and that's not life-threatening. If you put your wallet in 
their mouth, which one guy did in my class when his friend collapsed on the golf course, you actually close your airway up. You're filling his airway up with, it, with your wallet. You can't breathe. And he could dislocate his jaw. If you put a pen or some hard object in his mouth, he could break his teeth on it. So nothing in the mouth. Don't hold them down. Simply clear the area. Tom woke up soon after. And he's very tired. After one of these big seizures, you are extremely tired. Um, you can put them in a recovery position. He didn't want to, so we just had him sit quietly. And we just monitored him. In about 20 minutes, he stands up. He grabs his gym bag, and he says, okay, Tara, I'm ready to go. See you tomorrow. And I said, see you, Tom. Have a great day. Take care of yourself. See you tomorrow. Okay, so we didn't call 911 again. This was a known medical condition, and he didn't get hurt in the process. As scary as it was, it was not a 911 call. Now, the third time I witnessed a seizure, I'm at a four-way stop, and it's my turn, the car in front of me, it's his turn to go. He starts to accelerate, and then I see the driver fall into the seat. Now the car has no driver. <gasps> okay, thankfully he was barely moving. He drifts through the intersection and stops up against a pole. No one stopped. It was my turn. I go through the intersection, I pull over, I open up his door, and I see him twitch a couple of times. He, he was having a seizure. And then he wakes up, and he's all confused, looking at me. I said, sir, my name's Tara. I'm training for a state, and I'm here to help you. Have you ever had a seizure before? No, he says. Okay, that was a perfect time to call 911. If a person has never had a seizure before, it is definitely a call. If, they, if the seizure lasts more than a few minutes, that's not normal, then you call. Even if it's a known medical condition, it should only last a couple of minutes, okay? If they have several in a row, they get hurt in the process. Pregnant, diabetic, child, or baby. Um, that's when you call 911. Or if it happens in the water, they just don't wake up. These are times to call 911. But again, if it is a known medical condition and it only lasts a minute or two, they do not get hurt. It's not a 911 call. Thank you very much. I hope you learned something about seizures.